Greetings. Today you're going to have a quick look at fibre optic broadband. And I don't mean the fibre to the cabinet stuff, which is what most people consider to be fibre broadband. I'm talking about fibre to the premises, otherwise known as fibre to the home. Now this is my local cabinet and as you can see there's no green cab near this one because what we have down there is a load of fibre optic splitters. The fibre comes from the exchange to here and it hits a load of passive optical splitters which then distribute the fibre and send that out to the various poles. Here's the pole feed in my house and you can see that in addition to the copper junction box on the front of the pole we've got fibre junction boxes on either side and you can see there's a single fibre connection on there that's mine and that's connected along with my existing copper telephone service over to the house. Unlike earlier fibre to the premises offerings there's no splice box here. That fibre goes straight into the house and they were able to present the fibre exactly where I wanted it. So none of this has to be ground floor against an outside wall shenanigans. It's actually in the first floor cupboard. I've got the cable coming down this pre-existing trunking where it pops out into the fibre to the premises equipment which is there and that in turn feeds this which is a Plusnet Hub 1. The Plusnet Hub 1 should look quite familiar to anyone who's with BT for their internet because this is a home hub. Same thing, different case. Power consumption of both the fibre unit and the Plusnet Hub 1 are around about the 11 watts mark. You can see it's bouncing around 11, 11.1. What's interesting is if I turn the Wi-Fi off, if for example you're using a separate wireless access point like I am, it makes very little difference to the power consumption. And of that power consumption, the fiber unit itself draws around about 3.8 to 4 watts. Now before we take a look at the equipment in that cupboard, let's take a look at the fibre itself because it comes on a roll with the connection for the pole pre-terminated and the engineer cuts it to length and then feeds it into the house and terminates it. So this is a length of the cable. You can see it's got this figure eight cross section with the labelling on it to say what it is. It's actually made by Corning and it's FTTP hybrid overhead drop cable and it's property of BT. And here's what it's made up with. I've had to fit a macro lens to the camera so I can get close up on that. And what we have is these are the steel um, reinforcing wires so the cable can handle, handle its own weight. And you get these in conventional uh, copper drop wires but they tend to be solid construction, uh, solid conductors and they're very, um, they are very solid, they're quite tough to cut. This is still steel wire so it's still quite tough to cut but at least it's stranded so it is a little easier than the old ones. So there's two of those, one each side of the fibre. There's a copper service as well, it's a single copper pair, twisted pair. Now that means that it can provide, um, we can provide an analogue uh, a traditional analog telephone service over there as well or presumably if they were feeding this to equipment mounted remotely they could use this to provide the power so this could provide 48 volts or 120 volts DC power and you know to the equipment that's turned at the end of the fiber and speaking of which here is the fiber itself we've got the white jacket inside and then we've got this yellow fibrous stuff which I, I think is it's some sort of nylon um, it certainly it burns up it shrivels up if you try to use a match to it so it's not glass uh, as far as I'm aware and then in that you've got this white inner core of the um, well the inner in the inner sleeve and in there beyond that you can just about make out we've got fibre itself and in fact you can see we have an outer and an inner to that strand 
So you can see you've got the glass outer and inner core on that, and that is terminated in a plug, which for comparison is that size. So back at the box, you can see the copper cable has just been tucked back up and into the into the trunking out of the way because it's not being used. If there was a fault with the other cable, then it can be pressed into service. You just have to put a plug on the end. So let's take a look at this. And this actually has two hinged compartments. One gives access to all the cables. And the top half gives access to the units themselves. This is normally screwed shut, but it can be unscrewed and opened. And you can see it's a wall-mounted box containing two other boxes. And this is an Ecolife HD8110H-20. It's a GPON terminal, a gigabit uh, passive optical network terminal made by uh, Huawei. No, they're not Geordie. It's not, uh, it's not pronounced Huawei. It's apparently pronounced Huawei. And what we've got is the unit itself plus a battery backup unit. As you can see, if I take the power off, this will carry on running this. And you can see the light has gone amber because not only does it power the unit, it's also got a, a monitoring cable so it knows what's going on with it. And that's this cable here, which at the moment is looped around here and then goes up into this jack here. It's an RG45 at one end, it's a different connection at the other. But anyway, let's plug that back in. And get it back in its hole. Where are you? There. Standard 12 volt 2 amp power supply. And what this contains, if I just pop it away and take the cover off, is four rechargeable batteries, uh, nickel, uh, four rechargeable nickel metal hydroid batteries. Uh, these are standard batteries and it comes with them in the box. And I believe um, the initial pack are open reach responsibility. From there on then, it's the uh, the customer's responsibility. If they If these batteries fail, it's up to the customer to replace them. Then there's the unit itself then, which will that pop off? That should pop off. It should pop off, I'm not going to pop it off because it's still plugged in. There's a fibre connection here. Um, yeah, let me get the, the BBU connection out. There's the other end of that. It's a four pin, four pin connection, similar to a, a floppy drive power connector. Similar, but not the same. Um, here is the fibre, which is a crimped on SC plastic square cube shaped uh, connections. And it goes behind a spring loaded flap. If I just bring the camera down a little lower, we can see the connections. We've got the, the BBU is the connection from the battery back unit. There's also power there, which so there's two connections from the battery back unit into that. There's a telephone port here. If you don't have um, the telephone service provided over optical, and I don't, then you'll just get no dial tone with that at all. Then, you, like I said, you've got the BPU connection, and then we've got the optical connection here, which goes behind a little spring-loaded flap. Let me just pop that out and put it up and in, and straight away we had, there we go, PON, it's seeing the network, so it's up as quick as a flash. Let me plug the battery backup connection back in as well, so that'll be happy as well. And I shall clip that back back into place. Lights on the unit. The telephone port, like I said, isn't used on mine. Port 1 is showing the activity of the Ethernet connection, which goes into the Ethernet port on the back of the, the Hub 1. If you look on the back 
of the home hub, it goes into this port instead of this port. Loss, you'll get that if there's a loss of service, if it can't see the fibre connection, for example, if, for example, I've just unplugged it. Uh, PON means it can see the passive optical network, and power means the power is fine and it's actually got power from the mains. If power goes amber, it means it's running on battery, which it's going to do like that. There we go. So I'll plug that back in. Status light here. Green light obviously means it's getting power. The amber light will come on and it's charging now. And the fault light will come on, obviously, if there's a fault with the system. Presumably, if I take a battery out, I'd expect the fault light to come on there. And um, that's it. This is what you get with a um, fibre to the premises solution now. No external junction box on the wall. This is the external fibre coming all the way in. And if you want to know a bit more about um, this passive optical network, the GPON network, I'll put a link uh, here and in the video description so you can take a look at the Wikipedia article. It's quite interesting because this doesn't actually run... I'm paying for an 80 meg service. It doesn't run on a, at an 80 meg connection. It runs on a 2.5 gig connection with 1.5 gig going back uh, upstream. So take a look at the uh, the Wikipedia article and you'll see a lot more interesting information on there. I uh, hope someone finds this useful, interesting, and maybe thinks they're going to uh, go ahead with this. If you're with Plusnet and you're in an FTTP area, you can have this for the same price at the moment as you would for a uh, fibre service, a uh, fibre of the cabinet service, uh, and it depends on whether you want the 40 or the 80 meg service. They're not doing anything faster than that at the moment. They're just matching their fibre service, uh, the fibre to the cabinet service, and they're doing it at the same price. Um, otherwise, there are a few other providers as well. BT themselves, for example, uh, you can go up to... Uh, one of my, my colleagues has gone for a faster service. Not, I think you can get up to 330 meg service from BT. Obviously, you're paying a lot more for that. Um, Anyway, I hope someone finds this uh, interesting. Uh, thanks for watching.